Actually, uh, after discussion, after discussion with uh, our teams, the panel uh, about the program for Islamic Bank, so we decide to strengthen and improve about the response system, either to our staff and keep up, also for our uh, teachers. And another thing, another thing is to uh, make sure of the improve of our Islamic knowledge. So we decide to have Islamic lecture once a month. It's called uh, Islamic, uh, what we call the Islamic worldview. Yeah, and it's an Islamic type of view. We will have every mind. So hope all of us can finish our duty to make sure every first week, every first week on Wednesday, we have this program. Uh, I will uh, remind uh, in the WhatsApp uh, every month we have this. So, I think this is the first lecture. We will give by self uh, and uh, together with some um, Mr. Shazai to increase and improve our Islamic understanding. So, uh, we can achieve our mission and mission in very much. This is part of our Islam. Okay, thank you very much, and I thank this much to Mr. Shazai. Okay, uh, we will restart the session. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let us begin our majlis and our lecture with the citation of Umar Kitab al -Fatih. Material in nature. 
So that's why we need material survival. But when we speak about akhirat, when we speak about the hereafter, the journey from the world to the hereafter is, is spiritual in nature. And it means what? The supply also must be, must be spiritual in nature. So there are a lot of stop, there are a lot of R&R that we have to stop in order to restock our, our supply. Okay, to ensure that our life in the hereafter, who, you know, which is supposed to be in eternity, which is supposed to be eternal forever, will be, will be easier when we have this supply. Okay? So, um, so um, basically when I was preparing the slide, I really had no idea of what kind of method I should use. You know, in my class when I teach, I give my student notes, and then we, we have like a very, what we call it, academic slide shows, whether they like it or not, they have to pay attention because there is an exam coming. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the slide that I have prepared here, uh, inshallah, I hope will be interesting. Okay? So the first slide, I call it choosing the perspective. Okay? You know, if you choose to look at this picture from the perspective of the, of the black zone, what will you see? Two faces. Yes, you will see two faces. Okay? But if you choose the perspective of the white zone, what will you see? Face. Yeah, you will see a face or you will see a glass, for example. Yes. Alright? So the question now, which perspective is true? And how to determine which one is true? You cannot say both are true. Truth must always be one. This time is the truth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You have to you have to question the artist who, who create the picture. You know what kind of picture you are, you are you are intended to, to, to show to people. You have to ask the creator. The same thing with our life. When we look at the world, when we see our world, there are a lot of perspectives. Okay, we have for example economic perspective, we have for example political perspective, we have for example scientific perspective. You can look at from this angle, you can look at from that angle, but the question of which angle is true? Then, and then to know the truth, you have to ask the creator of the world. How should I see the world? Yeah, because the reality of our mind, if we always know, if we depend only on our logic and also reason, what will happen is relativity. You know, we will start to argue from a lot of angles. But we forget to ask the creator which angle, which perspective is true. Yeah, the same thing on, on the way we, we see our world. Macam mana kita nak lihat dunia? Ada banyak perspective. Tapi perspective mana yang betul? We have to ask God, we have to ask Tuhan yang menciptakan dunia. Yeah? Alright, the second picture. Yeah, another picture. Choosing the perspective. When we see our world, how should we see our world? Should we see our world as a big planet? Or should we see our world as one tiny dot among other planets in the entire universe? Which one? There is no answer. Why? Why there is no answer? This is to prove the limitation of our reason. We should say, I don't know. So if you don't know, to whom should you ask? Yeah? To, to what book you should refer, for example? Yeah? If we refer, for example, to the, to the individualism, individualistic approach, of course they will see the world from, from this perspective. You know, world is a, the earth is a big planet. Okay? We, we are the center of the universe, we are the center of the existence. So we are everything. Everything is about the earth, everything is about the world. But when we see the world from this perspective, it will teach us not to be, not to be arrogant in our life. Okay? You know, believe it or not, there are, there are a lot of problems that are happening in the world. Right? Yeah? Especially when we talk about individual problem, especially, you know, to be more specific when we talk about psychological problem. 
You know, it is very interesting. I can recall I read actually one book. You know, it is stated that all of the psychological problems that happen to the, to the people, especially to Muslim, they all happen because of only one reason. It is called egoism. And when you start to be egoistic, all of the problems in the world, you know, you will suffer from those problems. Yeah? And that's why in the Quran, when Allah speaks about egoism, you know, the first verse, in the, the first chapter in the Quran is Surah al right? And the second ayat of Surah Al-Fatiha, after Bismillah, of course, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you know, if you try to internalize more, it is actually about egoism. Yeah. You know, people who are egoistic, they have one characteristic. They like to be praised. Right? When people praise them, they will be, they will be good. When people insult them or people refuse to praise them, they are going to feel bad. But Allah mentioned in the Quran, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all praises are only for God, for Allah. Not for you. Who are you to deserve praise? Allah deserves all praises. Why? Rabbul Alami. He is the creator of the universe. See, He created this thing. And we are just one tiny dot among the, the other bigger dots in the universe. So when we see the world from this perspective, it will teach us a lot of things. It will solve as well a lot of things. Okay? Just like the video that I, I have shown to you just now, okay? before, before the session. It, it, it should define the way we see the world. Okay? What is the key? The world is temporary. Nothing is permanent when, when we speak about the world. And, and the poet say that it is, it is stupid or it is unwise to fall in love with something which is, which is not permanent. Crazy, right? So we should fall in love with, with the with the after, right? with the with the here after. Your here after is permanent, but doesn't mean you abandon the world. It just means you have to live your life even better, so you will you will get better reward to live your after. Yeah, I remember I had one professor before, but you know during the first class my my professor told me, he said, you know, remember death all the time. They couldn't know. Ingatlah kematian setiap masa. So I was thinking like, why should I remember my death? We should we should be thinking about life, right? Because we are alive. So I asked my I asked my prof. I said, prof, why should I think about my death? I should be thinking about my life. And my prof mentioned to me, thinking about death is going to motivate you to live your life even better. And then I was thinking. How, how exactly do I do that? Okay, and I start to ask myself a question. I said, let's say I try to move. The question now, am I prepared to die? Are we prepared? Are we good enough in terms of the action, in terms of the amal and so on? And then the answer is, I'm not prepared. So the question, the next question will be, how to make myself prepared? The answer is, I should live my life even better. So I will have enough supply just now. So after my, when I die, I'm going to go to the day after, I'm going to enjoy my life there. But when we think about life, okay, uh, this is what my prof mentioned to me, when we think about life, there are so many problems in life. It will demotivate you to live your life. It will motivate you to die, actually. Okay, you are thinking about life. Oh, there are so many, so many death. There are so many problems. There are so many what? There are stress here and there. So it demotivates you from living your life. But thinking about death will motivate to live your life. It's very ironic, actually. But this is what? Rasulullah SAW recommended us to, yeah, to think about, about that. Okay? So again, choosing the perspective. Alright? Okay. So after we have, we have seen regarding the perspective, uh, actually my plan today is to give you more answer than, uh, more question than the answers. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point. Of, yeah? Uh, but inshallah, in the next series, in the next class, we will require the answer to be. Yeah?
I cannot promise you that I will provide an answer. Okay? But I can promise you I will guide you how to get the answer. You can get the answer on your own. Okay. Alright. Okay. So the background of the worldview. What is the purpose of learning, of, of discussing, or talking about worldview? Is it so important? Yes, it is important. Why? Because it is to answer the wonders of man. Okay, believe it or not, we have a lot of questions. Sometimes we ask ourselves and we keep it to ourselves. Sometimes we ask others. And sometimes others can provide answer. Sometimes these people they cannot provide answer. So you have to find the answer on your own. Okay? So let's see here for example. There are a lot of questions of course, but there are three most popular questions that men ask himself. Okay? Uh, this is this, these three questions are discussed by the scholars. The, the, the previous scholars, they are also discussed by the contemporary scholars. Yeah? So number one, where do I come from? Daripada mana saya datang? The answer is not I come from Jumbo. <laughs> we are not talking about well, we are not talking about nationality of the, 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 the state you are from. We are talking about the origin of your existence. Okay, where do we come from? If I ask you a question, let's say now, okay? Let, let's imagine, okay, I say let's. Okay? Let's imagine that we are all atheists. Can we do that just for a moment? Okay? <laughs> imagine we are atheists. Let's try and answer this question. Where do I come from? Uh, atheists are the people who do not believe in God, sorry. They don't have anything. They are godless. Yeah, atheists. Yeah? Okay, where do I come from? Atheists. 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 Sorry. Mami's tamaan. Mami's tamaan. So I, I come from my parents. Uh, that, that, the, the logical answer. Okay? And then the next question would be, where do your parents come from? Your grandparents, where do they come from? Great, 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 great grandparents. So the next question, the last question will be, where does the chain stop? It will stop somewhere. <laughs> okay, let's see. We come from Maki, but it still doesn't solve the problem. Where do monkeys come from? Monkey, 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 and I remember I, I asked teacher one question, I said, I said, okay, if I come from Eve, it means that my grandparents, they are Eve, right? So why don't I look like Eve? I, I was, I was kid, I that time. Okay? And I remember another question that I asked my teacher. You know, Allah mentioned in Quran, the first human being is Adam, was Adam and Salam. And Adam was not Eve. So how do I solve this puzzle? And I remember the, the, the answer of my teacher, my teacher said what? You know Charles Darwin was a great scientist, who are you to question him? Uh, of course I was silent during that time. Yeah, because I was still small again. Yeah? Yeah? Alright, so where do I come from? You cannot solve this question unless you believe. Yes, you believe in God. You cannot solve this question unless you believe in God. Okay, I asked you just now, right? Where does the chain stop? It will stop somewhere. The great, great grandparent, it will stop somewhere. So who will be the first human being? Uh, and suddenly you say Adam. And where did you get the name of Adam? You get that from the Quran, from the revelation of God. So if you reject God in the first place, how do you solve the question? It doesn't satisfy your intellect. We are intellectual creatures. We ask questions to solve them. Okay, what's the point of asking questions and then you, you don't solve the question? Okay, let's look at the second one. 
Why I am here or why am I here? What is the purpose of our existence? What is the purpose of our life? Let's imagine that we are, we are still atheists. No. Yeah? So what is the purpose of our life? What is the purpose of our creation? Uh, no, not creation. No. What is the purpose of our existence? Because they don't believe in creation. Yeah? What is the purpose of our life? What should we do in this time? Lead uh, life to the fullest. How? Lead life to the fullest. How? This you have to give the perspective eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, I will give you several uh, examples how do people try to solve this question. Okay? Let's look at the, the third question. Where will, I, where will I go after my death? Uh, this is what we call the eschatology. When you die, what will happen next? You stay dead. <laughs> So is, is that the what the end of everything? Okay, let's watch one video. Material objects, just a collection of highly organized atoms. When your brain flatlines, that's it. Game over. So you don't believe in life after death? No. I mean, it's a comforting thought, but there's just no scientific evidence for it. I'd rather face the real world than believe in a fairy tale. Yeah, I agree with you, Sam. It's best to face reality, but it may be that life after death is reality. I mean, think about it. If life just ends at death, then everything we do or say comes to nothing. What meaning or purpose can our lives possibly have? Well, I guess my life has whatever meaning I choose to give it. I personally believe in truth, beauty, science, making the world a better place, saving the environment, freedom of speech, and, you know, tolerance. Yes, that's all well and good. But what does all that matter if it ends in nothingness? What are your thoughts about God? But, you know, if anything that makes you feel good, I won't argue with that. But I personally prefer more of a rational, open-minded approach to life. Here's what I believe, Sasha. You shouldn't think anything is true unless it's been scientifically proven. But has that belief itself been scientifically proven? Um... Sam, you and I look at life very differently. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like we're from different worlds. Not different worlds. Different world views. A worldview is the set of lenses through which you see the world around you. It's a web of habit-forming beliefs that helps you make sense of all your experiences. Through your worldview, you interpret life in a particular way. It affects how you think, how you feel, and how you live from day to day. To understand what your worldview is, think carefully about the big questions of life. Does God exist? How did everything begin? Who am I? Why am I here? Am I living a good life? What happens after I die? Okay, how do you find the religion? If death is really the end of everything, then what is the what is the purpose of living our life? What is the purpose of doing good things in the first place? If everything just going to end in nothingness. Imagine you build a lot of things in the, in the world, you did a lot of you make a lot of good things in the world, and suddenly you just die and it stops. 
So what is the meaning of doing good action? It has no meaning. Unless you will live in a, in a life after that. So this is the approach of Islam. We believe in a life after that, not because we want to abandon the world, but because it is to motivate us to live our life even better, to make even more contribution in the world. So it will help us in, in the year after. Okay? Alright. So I'm going to share my experience here. Yeah, I, I always share this thing during, during the talk. You know, when I was in university before, one, one of my students came to me and he asked me one question. Okay? Uh, he said, uh, Sir, I have one roommate. My roommate is an African. You can imagine an African. Yeah? So he mentioned to me, my roommate, he's very black, he's very dark in color. The skin. Okay? And to me, dark or black is ugly. He said. Okay? So is it wrong for me to tell my friend, my friend, you are ugly? Is it wrong to tell the truth? Because for him, that is the truth. The good thing. So I mentioned to my student, in Islam, it is not wrong to tell the truth. You should tell the truth, in fact. But how do you know? that black is ugly is actually a truth. Who defines black is ugly for you? Did Allah ever mention in the Quran or did the Prophet never you know, ever mention in the Hadith that black is ugly? No. This is what happened to Shaitan. This is what happened to Iblis. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the first human being, Adam alayhi salam, you know Allah asked all the angels to prostrate before Adam. Allah memberi perintah kepada semua malaikat untuk sujud kepada Adam. And all of the angels, they obey the instruction. They prostrated before Adam as a sign of respect, of course. Okay? Except, Iblis. Okay? And in another surah, Allah, you know, Iblis mentioned to Allah, Oh Allah, I refuse to prostrate before Adam because you created Adam from clay, from soil. And you created me from fire. So fire is holier, is better than than soil, than clay. Yeah, you go into again. The question now, did Allah ever mention in the Quran that fire is better than clay? Shaitan was using his own logic and reason. And what happened? He was cursed. And in fact, Allah declared that you are among the kafirin. Abba was stuck about what kind of you are among the kafirin. Okay? So we have no right to define worldview. We have ability to define worldview. But we have no right to define worldview. And I will tell you one. Okay? So I say to my student, beauty is not defined by the color of the skin. Beauty is, is in Islam is defined by akhlaq. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are, it doesn't matter how handsome you are. But if you fail to obey the instruction of God, if you fail you know, to, to, to practice ethics among, among society, for example, you are not beautiful. Okay? And the fact Allah mentioned in the Quran that Allah has created all human beings in the best design, it means all of us are beautiful. So what is the impact on the world view? It is called self-esteem. Again, one of the most serious psychological problems is what? Lack of self-esteem. Kebanyakan masalah psikologi yang berlaku di kalangan masyarakat adalah kurang di keyakinan diri. Ayah, itu pergi motivasi, pergi sana untuk diri. Why? Because they, they don't believe that Allah created them in their best design, in their best capacity. If you have this belief, that's it. It should motivate you to the fullest. You should be motivated. You are in your best design. It doesn't matter what people say about you. You are in your best design. Yeah? Alright. <coughs> Any question before I continue? Uh, it's not a question, but uh, to strengthen that black. Okay. So even uh, in the Quran, talk or mention about many warriors, black, right? Yes. Human or human. Yeah. Bila the robot. Even uh, our hijab, uh, yeah. hijab as what? Well, the black stone. Right? Yeah, thank you, correct. Yeah, uh, Bilal the Rabbah, for example, you know, one of the renowned companions of Rasulullah 
you know, uh, in one occasion, Rasulullah, you know, went back from the the okay, uh, the event of Isra and Mi'raj. Yeah, so Rasulullah mentioned to me that Bilal, when I was in the in the heaven visiting heaven, I heard your footstep. So this black man is guaranteed jannah. So it doesn't matter whether you are black or whether you are not black. You are still beautiful. You are you deserve still for for jannah. Provided that you have good good heart. Okay. All right. So human attempts to solve the wonders. Okay. Ah, percubaan percubaan manusia untuk menyelesaikan soalan soalan tadi. Okay. So the result of inability to find the answers lead to the incomplete puzzles of mind and heart. You know, when you fail to solve the question, you will have like, you know, you will feel like there is something missing inside your heart and something missing inside your mind. Okay? And trust me, whenever something is missing, you need to replace with something else. But make sure this replacement is right. Now we are talking about fitrah. You know, all of these questions that we ask just now, they are already in our fitrah. But the more we try to reject our fitrah, we reject God, we reject Allah, we will have one missing puzzle inside the heart. And we will need to find a replacement puzzle. Okay? So let's look at the example of the replacement. Okay? Alright. The first question just now, we are talking about the, 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 the theory of origin. Where do I come from? You know, uh, Darwin introduced the theory of evolution by natural selection. So where do we come from? We come from A. Uh, just like I mentioned, uh, when I was in school before, you know, after I learned those things and I went back to my house, you know, I still remember I was like lying down, reading the book, and I remember I was laughing. I said, how can people believe that we come from monkey? How can you believe that you know you used to live in jungle? You used to be what? You used to be without clothes, naked. You used to be what like climbing the trees all the time, and you used to eat bananas all the time. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can you believe that? It doesn't make sense at all. Okay. All right. And the same thing with the, the theory of randomness and accident. You know, the science keep mentioning that the world and the existence happened by accident. Okay, there was nothing, there was nothing, suddenly, boom, there is the world. Accidentally. Now, this, is, this is what people say about Big Bang Theory, eh? the, the big explosion, boom. And then suddenly, all of the planets, they are placed on the right orbit, systematically. It doesn't make sense. You know when you look at the, the handphone, yeah? this phone is very complex. Okay? If let's say for example, I just smash this phone, not this phone, huh? your phone you <laughs> If I smash one phone on the floor, for example, whenever the, the phone touch the floor, explosion will happen, right? Uh, let's make it more dramatic. Yeah? And let's say that there is one building, level 5, right? You climb the stairs, you take the stairs to the level 5, and then you jump from level 5 head first. And when your head touch the floor, what will happen? Explosion will happen. And this explosion happened randomly and accidentally. The question now, will you be a better person? Oh yeah, the that. So randomness cannot cause something good to be better or cannot cause something bad to be good. Like in the case of if, you know, if is of course lower than our existence. And suddenly, randomly, by natural selection, become human. Who is better than he is? That's the point. Randomness cannot cause something bad to be good or cannot cause something good to be better. If you take one bomb, yeah, you just you just throw the to the KLCC. Uh, not KLCC, WTC. <laughs> That's it. You just throw randomly. Close the eyes. Will KLCC suddenly become fallen? doesn't happen everywhere. It's going to be destroyed and not only that, the destruction will be very massive. But when people try to destroy building, they plant the bomb, not randomly, they plant that. 
They do it systematically. Uh, let's plant the bomb in a, in this pillar, in that pillar, that pillar, that pillar. So when you detonate the bomb, what will happen? The building will destroy nicely. But it, 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 it is done within control. There is a design, there is a system. And when we talk about design, of course there is the existence of the designer. The designer is God. And of course you cannot come to that conclusion unless you, you believe in God. Yeah? Alright, number two, why, I, why am I here? There are various ideologies such as capitalism. Capitalism what? Define the purpose of the life is to uh, is to collect or to gather as much as money as possible. It's all about money. Yeah? And the same thing with hedonism. It's all about entertainment, finding pleasure. Yeah? And communism. It's all about having equal rights. Yeah? And what else? Environmentalism. It's all about protecting the environment. You don't have to protect the human, you just protect the environment. Some people are like that. Yeah? And then feminism. Just to fight for the right of women. That's the purpose of my life. Uh, of course, there is another one, of masculinism. Yeah, it's very rare, not popular. <laughs> so I just put feminism. Yeah? This is the Zionism. The purpose of life is only to get a country, a state. And that's why they, they build, or they are building, still the, the, the land of Israel, the state of Israel. Yeah? And then anarchism, the same thing, is to establish the, the what we call it, uh, yeah, the right. Yeah, only that. Okay, but it's, uh, all of these, the true purpose of life. And because they are, okay, okay, and the last one, what will happen after my, my death? Uh, some people, they believe in materialism, they say what? Whatever is not material in nature, should not be believed. Uh, apa yang aku tak boleh nampak, apa yang aku tak boleh pegang, apa yang aku tak boleh hidup, tak penting. Materialism. Yeah? And then the atheism, the same thing. They don't believe in God, so they don't believe in the life after that. The same thing with scientism, just like Sam just now, the video. Sam says, I do not believe in something unless it is scientifically proven. And, and what did the girls uh, ask? Uh, how do you prove science itself is scientific? This is a very good question. Okay, Sam cakap, saya takkan percaya kecuali telah dibuktikan oleh science secara scientific. Uh, yang perempuan tu tanya, macam mana kita nak buktikan science itu sendiri adalah scientific? Just like the theory of Darwin, people say it is a scientific theory. How do you prove it is scientific? So, uh, have you read the book of Darwin? Oh, Again, yeah. there is actually one paragraph which is so interesting. It is regarding the existence of birds. Uh, how did Darwin explain about birds? Let's maybe share. Um, uh, the uh, beginning of that uh, is through the evolution as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but it started as a uh, fish yes. that was uh, in the sea yeah. that came out of the water. And those that returned to the sea became reptiles, some became reptiles, became fish. The, the rest who stayed on land became amphibians. And through amphibians, evolution came, uh, the uh, reptiles uh, evolution uh, with the dinosaurs and everything like that. And those that decided to fly created wings by evolution through millions of years. Yes. And that those were actually mammals. Yeah. Okay? The, the mammalians with wings then formed through evolution again, but without any, there is no design why they, yes. they had feathers. Okay, so that's kind of like an evolution to evolution, and that's where birds came about. Okay. Ah, yes, is that, that's another theory of the yeah. To make it simple, Darwin said, all the birds, they used to be fish yes. in the sea. Okay? And because, what we call it, many fish, they couldn't find food in the sea. So they have decided to go out of the sea. You think, you think logically, yeah? Fish, go out of the sea, what happens? Yeah, this 
Why we don't market kan? Tangkap ikan, letak dekat pasar, mati lah. Except, except uh, there are fish that can actually go out and survive because they have to. They've got gills and they've got lungs. Yes. That is true in our science today. They're yes. called axolotls. Yeah. The axolotls now, they, according to uh, many evolutionists, have started the, the uh, amphibian species. But then again, it does not it does not jive to birds. Yeah, especially the wing part, right? The wings, yes. yes. <laughs> so that, that's one logic. And the other thing is that they said, you no, know, Darwin mentioned after the fish transform to be a mammal or amphibian, and what happened? They grow wing, and then they fly. Can you imagine people consider this story as a scientific so a theory? You know, let me tell you the same story, okay, but with, with different mode and different you know, tone. You know, there is one frog. The frog is trying to find uh, a partner, a spouse, but it couldn't find anyone. So what did the frog decide to do? The frog decided to go to the castle. Have you heard the story? <laughs> so the frog met one princess, and he said to the princess, can you kiss me so I will evolve? To become a prince. And then the princess kiss and you know day by day the frog evolved or transform to be a prince. What how will you respond to that story? Yeah. So why don't people respond to the same story brought by Toby? That's the question. It's simple logic. Yeah? Uh, we are not here to discuss about that. We can have a conversation to discuss about the total revolution. But this is just to prove to you that we can we can use our own logic. Okay, to actually refute the theory. Okay. So it goes to the last question here. There are so many ideologies, there are so many theories. Which one is true? Boyfriend, the, the girlfriend, they, 
about the um, weak, uh, weak both parties, eh? weak up for the country. And can that be considered as Islamic or as 18 as well? No. <laughs> because the responsibility of waking up a daughter is not the responsibility of the boyfriend, it's the responsibility of the parents. Yes. Correct, but <laughs> yes. uh, so, so I say to my student, if you say there is Islamic ethic, there is Islamic feminism, so after this people can say there is a version of Islamic mini skirt. <laughs> so can you do that? Oh, okay. uh, there, is, there is the version of Islamic pork after this. Islamic pork. Ah, you sama, water, is that shahada? You can. Uh, there is no such thing as that. Yeah, what is prohibited is prohibited. There is no Islamic version. Yeah. Okay? Alright. And then 
when, when people say Al-Quran is absolute, Al-Quran is great And then people ask me, how do you prove that? Because everything is debatable, arguable How do you prove that Al-Quran is absolute, Al-Quran is great? But yeah, remember something Al-Quran is revealed to Allah in the form of language Okay. Yes, in the form of language, is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry. Or oh, even the prophets of Allah, sorry. In the form of language. Yeah? In the form of language. Alright? Not in the form of CD, for example. So you can put into CD room and you watch the video. No. It is not in the form of visuals, but in the form of language. Yeah? The question of why language? Because language can give understanding to our mind. Okay? And it is proven in the it is proven in the history during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu The language of the Quran managed to defeat the language of the poets during that time. Because during the time of Arab Jahiliya, these people they were very obsessed with poems, Sha'ir. Yeah? So they used beautiful languages. They used poetic words. But Al Quran came down and defeated the language of poets. The first miracle. Nowadays, in our modern time, people no longer obsess about poem. Are, are, are you obsessed about poem? <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's say people invite you. Okay, let's let's go to the Tarun Deka. Let's let's listen to some poem. People will be like, seriously. <laughs> some people will love it, yes. But you know, most of the time, people don't like it anymore. Because nowadays, people are obsessed about science. And again, the language of the Quran has defeated the language of science by providing so many scientific theories in the Quran, and it was revealed 1,500 years ago. That is interesting. Yeah? So, Al Quran is absolute. Yeah? Alright. So, Sunnah. Is inspired by God. Okay, when we speak about Sunnah, of course Sunnah is uttered by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it was inspired by Allah. And so Allah mentioned in Quran, "Wa ma yatiku hanil awa in huwa ida wa hijuha." Prophet never speak out of his desire. Whatever he speak is the inspiration from Wahyu, from Revelation. Yeah. Alright. So it is not the product of whims and desire. Yeah. Though both are absolute. So if I ask you the question just now, there are so many perspectives. Which perspective should I use? Uh, should I choose? I should choose perspective which are absolute. And the only absolute thing in this world, there are only two. What are they? Quran and Sunnah. So choosing the perspective of Quran and Sunnah, it is not just recommended by Islam, but also recommended by our logic. That's the point. Yeah? Alright. Any question before we continue? Is it too heavy? It's not. I hope it's not. Muni? Yeah? Huh? Okay. Okay. Is that? Alat tanya? Soalan? SMS, SMS. SMS. Any questions? No, sorry. Okay, uh, now we go to the first part of Islamic worldview. Okay, just now it's all about worldview. Yeah? So Islamic worldview is based on the guided understanding of our Quranism. Why are you guided? To understand our Quranism now, you still need to use your reason. But reason should be guided by Quran and Sunnah. Meaning to say, when you try to interpret something, you don't go against Quran and Sunnah. Yeah? So, Islam accept yeah, the use of reason or akal, but must be within the guidance of Quran and Sunnah. The implication towards the view on freedom and right. So, what do we understand from this? from this what we call it a concept that if you want to use your akal, it must be guided by Quran and Sunnah the implication on our worldview is regarding freedom and right you know nowadays 
people always talk about that in the world. Again, we have the issue of LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. They always use freedom and right. Uh, you know, I want to be gay, why is my right? My body, my right. This is what I can do. Sexuality, Madeka before. They have one motto. The motto is, my, our body, our right. <laughs> Very simple. Okay? They are talking about right all the time. Uh, the same thing, before this we have the issue of transgender, yeah? uh, They say the same thing, uh. transgender is a right to be practiced. Okay, in one newspaper, I still remember, it is Malaysia TV, I would say. You know, they wrote, Muslims are against the right of transgender. Uh, and I wrote one article actually, and I posted to them. I posted to them, but they never replied, they don't know why. I say to them, it is not Muslim who are against the right of transgender, it is transgender who are against the right of Muslim. So that's the essence of my, of my article. Yeah? And I was hoping that they would reply that they didn't. I don't know why. And they, you know, people started to use the word uh, ikrohabiji. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no compulsion in religion. Let me tell you something. Okay? If you read the Tafsir, La ikrohabiji, there is no compulsion in religion can only be used to non-Muslim. For uh, Muslim, you have to follow lah. The logic is very simple lah. For example, yes. Yeah. For example, we work at Brandy Bunch, for example. Yeah. And the law of, the rule of Brandy Bunch, for example, you have to display your stuff card all the time. Let's say, let's say, let's say. Smaller. I say example lah. I can only think about that right now. <laughs> uh, it's like yeah? And let's say one day, yeah, one day I, I, I went to one city. It's kind of fun, eh? And I said, all of you, you should display your stuff card. So they asked me why. I said, because so that's the rule of brain funds. You know what they were saying? We are not in brain funds. So they said to me, I must say, you cannot force them to perform for that. They say we are not Muslim. <laughs> but when you are in Brady Bunch, can you say, ah, oh, no lah, nah, nah, nah. I don't want to display one. Okay. Can you say that? No. By who or by who, whether you like it or not, you have to do it because you are within the community. So you are subject to the law. So once you embrace Islam, you subject to the law and regulation of Islam. You can say no, but you have no right to say no. Right. Okay? Yeah? Alright. So, uh, any question? Okay, when we talk about right, there is one actually uh, interesting uh, explanation by, by Yusuf al Qaradawi. You know Dr. Yusuf al Qaradawi, right? Yes? He mentioned about freedom of right. Uh, no, so freedom of right, sorry, not freedom of right. Uh, yes, freedom of right. Yeah? Uh, or freedom of choice, actually, sorry. Yeah? He is talking about freedom of choice. In Arabic, it is called al ikhtiya yeah? And he mentioned the word al ikhtiya coming from the word fayyarah. So, if I'm wrong, correct. Yeah? Fayyarah means to choose. And the word fayyarah in Arabic is derived from the word khayrun, which means good. So, freedom of choice is not to choose between good and bad, it is to choose between good and good. Yes and yes. <laughs> Why? Because bad choice is not even a choice in the first place. Uh, you have a choice, eh? You have two choices. Eh? To come to the top or not to come to the top. Actually, during that time, you don't have two choices. You only have one choice. To come. Because bad choice is not even a choice. You can choose to solat or not to perform solat. Uh, wrong. Wrong. You can choose to solat either in mosque, in masjid, or in house. Only that. But solat and not to solat, not to solat, they are not, it is not even a choice. It's bad. So not to choose between good and bad, but to choose between good and good. Yeah? Alright. So like, uh, so like actually that in the home, the world is nothing fine. So the city that we choose in the term of Mubarak yeah. and all the other commanders? Yes. Uh, in terms of the Bukong, we can only choose 
whenever the hukum is mubah, is recommended. Uh, but whenever it's wajib, you cannot choose anymore. You must do it. Haram, you cannot choose to do. You must choose not to do. Yeah? And, and, and I, I remember another explanation about freedom of freedom of choice. Because I remember I, I was I was delivering one lecture actually in UAE. And there was one man asking me question. Yeah? He asked me, let's say I have a kid, I have a son. And I, I told my son, my son, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you. Just whatever you want. And when he did wrong, I punished him. Am I being fair? So the same, the same thing with Allah. Allah gives us freedom. Do what we want. When we do wrong, Allah put us in hell. Is it fair? Yes. You cannot give two different answers in two similar situations. Just now you say it's not just. <laughs> no, it is just. Right? So we have to define. What is freedom of choice? Your freedom of choice doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Okay? And whenever Allah gives you freedom of choice just now, it's not to choose between good and bad. It's to choose between good and good. Okay? And I remember the explanation of my prop. He, made, he said, let's say for example, I have one kid. And I brought my kid to class one day. Because you know, my name is absent. He said. And my kid is well, it's not kid, I remember. He's playing in the, in the class, disturbing everyone. And I mentioned to my kid, I will give you two choices. If you behave, I will give you chocolate. If you don't behave, I will give you books. Example, he said. And I know my son loves chocolate. He said, I know that. How do I know? I know because I'm the father. So, what will the son choose? What do you think? You know that, you know, the father knows that the son will choose chocolate, but still the father gives choices. So when the son chooses, it is not because the father forced him to choose. Allah knows exactly what we will choose. He's our creator. But still he gives us So when you choose to do wrong, you are responsible, you are accountable for your own. Characteristic of Islamic worldview, number one, is holistic. Okay, holistic in a sense comprehensive, both the world and hereafter. Matter and spirit, seen and unseen. This is what makes Islam so interesting because we believe in the unseen. Okay, yeah, look at the Surah Al Baqarah. Alif Lam Mim Zalik Al Kitab Ula Rabbi Fi Udal Mustaqim Al Ladina Yuminu Nabi Qayyib. Quran is the guidance for the mutaqi, people who have taqwa. Who are they? Who are people of taqwa? People of taqwa alladina yu'minu nabil ghaib. Those people who believe in the unseen ghaib. So you have to believe in the, in the unseen. Yeah? Why Western world view is about here and now. Have you heard the word secularism? Secularism coming from the word secular. Secular means here and now. Uh, so people of secularism, the secular people, they always talk about here and now only. Because only here and now that can be seen. Okay? Uh, and another interesting fact. You know, uh, if you have time after this, you can refer to the dictionary, try to find the meaning of science. S C I N C E can science. Uh, you can Google. Try to find the meaning of science. Of okay, course, it has a lot of meanings, but try to find the essence. Authentic knowledge. The what? Authentic. Authentic knowledge. Okay. And other than, other than that? Because we are not talking about science as anymore, <laughs> as knowledge. We are talking about science as science just now. Darwin just now. Science. Yes? Physical studies. Yeah, exactly. Science is the systematic study of physical world. When we talk about physical, and what is the meaning of physical? What you can see, what you can touch, blah blah blah. 
If you ask Dabi and Dabi, have you seen monkey turn to be man? <coughs> have you touched monkey turn to be man? Touch of monkey, sir. Have you what? Smell monkey turn to be man? He said, no, it happened years, million years ago. So they are not physical. And something which is not physical is not scientific. So by definition itself, you can say science, even science is not scientific. When, there, when something is not physical, it is called metaphysical. Metaphysical is discussed by religion. That's it. So when we talk about the theory of creation, the theory of existence, only religion has right to, to give the theory or to give information. Just by looking at definition. Of course, there are many other angles. Yeah? But I don't want to go into that. Let's focus on religion. Yeah? Okay, religion is a revelation from God. Western world view believe religion is a product of people and culture. Uh, this is what makes us different. Kenapa Islam itu absolute? Kenapa Islam bersifat hakiki? Uh, why Islam is considered absolute? Because Islam is not the creation of people. Uh, when you talk about Christianity, they are the product of people. The religion itself is a product of Saint Paul. He was the one who defined everything in Christianity and including original sin, what else? The atonement, even Bible also were written by by man. You know, I remember I, I attended several talks by, by some ustaz. I, I was very shocked when some ustaz said, you know, Bible was actually in jail. <laughs> was in jail. In jail, in jail. One of the scriptures in Quran. No, it is not Bible. You know, let me tell you something. Christian themselves never claim their book come from God. Suddenly, we Muslims say, oh, their book actually was from God after that Quran. <coughs> what is the proof that their book was written? The first gospel is called Luke. And the book of Luke was written by Luke, and name of a man. The Gospel of John was written by John, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. But a man. No. Uh, apostle, uh, apostle John is different. The apostle John, John the Apostle, could not write. Yeah. Uh, but John, the Gospel of John, which is actually taken out from the Bible, is one of the sons of John. Yes. Is Yahya. Yeah. Uh, Prophet Yahya. Yeah. That one because it indicates uh, the authentic script of Yahya indicates yeah. that uh, Nabi Isa is a man. Yeah. And indicates that there will be another person to come after Yahya, uh, after Jesus Christ. The second arrival. Yes, the, the prophet, the last prophet. And John actually told them that there would be a last prophet, not Nabi Isa. And he said in the Gospel of John that I am not even fit. That Nabi Isa said that he is not actually fit to even tie the shoes of the last prophet. That one, the Vatican took out yes. of the Bible. Yes. Yes. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about that John Bible. I'm talking about the nowadays the one. Yeah, yes, the modern. Yes, the modern. Yeah. So it, it just refers to they they dedicate the name of man, but still a man. Yeah. But that one, of course, was taken out really by the church. Okay. Historically speaking. All right. But still, you know, they never claim that their book come from God. And suddenly, we Muslim claim their books come from God. It's like we know better about their religion than the Christian themselves. Yeah, this is actually ironic. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Alright. So, religion is not a product of people and culture. That's why religion should not change. But that's what uh, our primary school, but not very much, yeah? Our primary school, the secondary school, learn Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They learn about this thing. They said uh, Bible used to be in jail before and so on. Yes. Yes. 
But now at least I don't think they teach this in that day. Oh, okay, they translate. I think trans translation is not a problem, I think. But we have to make it clear that it's not the Bible referring to the Bible used by the Christian. No. But it is better to say that it's just in Jane. Yeah, for the sake of translation. Right? Okay, um, I wanted to say something as well. Oh, okay. Okay, I remember. <laughs> okay, uh, another uh, misunderstanding. I would like to correct some understanding. Okay? Uh, trust me when I say this, it is not, the purpose is not to support other religions. Okay? But the purpose is to give justice to them. Because Muslim, we always believe in justice. Yeah? Even al Adalah is one of the principles of Islam. Yes? You know, I heard some Muslim mention that. You know, uh, uh, Islam is the, the, the only true religion in the world. Of course, we believe in that. Yeah? And then he said, one of the proof is that the name of Islam is not taken or is not quoted from the name of man or the name of Paulia or the name of people. Uh, Islam is Islam. Islam is not Muhammadism right now. We call Islam as Islam, not taken from the name of man. But in the, in the case of Christianity, Jesus Christ, Christianity. And then Hinduism from the people, Hindus. Buddhism from the founder, Siddhartha Gautama Buddha. Uh, what else? Zoroastrianism from Zarastura and so on. Taoism from Tao and so on. Blah, blah. Okay? Uh, let me tell you, this is very wrong. It is not a fact. Uh, I give you a simple example, okay? Uh, Islam uses Arabic, right? I mean, the language of the Quran, they are all Arabic. And Islam is Arabic word. Logic, huh? Logical. Christian, Christianity, the original language is not. It's not English. So the word Christianity is English. Proof that the real name of Christianity was not Christianity. Because they use Hebrew or Syrian or Aramaic. Yeah. Okay? The same thing with Hindus. They use Sanskrit. Suddenly the name of religion is Hinduism, which is English. Does it make sense, right? Buddhism use Pali language. The language is there. So how can somebody become Buddhism? Hmm. Doesn't make sense. Yeah? So if you study the real name of Hinduism, it's not Hinduism. In Sanskrit language, it is called Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma. Dharma. But if you ask the Hindu, what is your religion? Sanatana Dharma. Would you understand that? <laughs> The, the, the Buddhist, the Buddhism, the real name is Dharma Vinaya. So, do you think all the people that they are Sanatana Dharma? Uh, I believe that majority of them they do not know. Majority? They do not So, when we ask them, what's your religion? They say, uh, they say Hinduism. Not Sanatana Dharma. But still, we have to give justice to them. No? Okay? Yes, we believe that Islam, we want to prove that Islam is the, the only true religion. Yes, we want to prove that. But we've got to make sure that the fact is right. Fact it right. <laughs> fact it right. Yeah? No, just, just have to make sure it is right. Give justice to them. Yeah? Even if you want to condemn them. Or you want to say that they are lesser than us. Right? Yeah? Alright. And then the last one, belief or iman, is a necessity. Yeah? Western will you restrict merely on empirical study? Okay? Uh, in the West, Whatever they see, whatever they can touch just now, uh, they will believe only in that. But they will not believe something that they cannot see. But in Islam, belief is a necessity. You know, in Islam, there is one surah, Surah Al-Rahman. Eh? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Al-Rahman. Allama al-Qur'an. Khalaqa al-Hisad. Allama al-Bayat. Allah mentioned Al-Rahman. One of the name of God. Allama al-Qur'an. Allah is the one who taught us Al-Qur'an. 
Khalaqal insan Allah created human Alamahul bayan And Allah taught to human Al-bayan What is al-bayan? Ustaz, can you help me? What is al-bayan? Yes, but the literal meaning of Al-Bayan It is something we can understand Okay, something that we can understand To be specific, Bayan is at least speech Language That's why I said this now Allah reveal Al-Quran in the form of language Yeah, alright Tadi saya ada bincang dengan Advisor Okay, let's say for example, in one video ni kan You are working, tadi dia Aisyah Okay, I say, run, there is fire Run When you listen that, when you listen to that instruction Will you run or will you sleep? Where is fire? Where is fire? You heard the bell and so on You heard people shouting Will you run? Will you stay and say, prove me where is the fire? People run. Most, you know, most of the time people run. Why? Because they understand the language and they believe they don't have to see. But when the when the when the kid when the cat, for example, cut bell, will the cat run? Cat will have to see the fire first before they run, or they smell the flame, and then they run. That's the difference between human and animal. Animal they rely all the time on their senses, and then they believe. Man, we don't have to use our senses all the time because we have this even more supreme than our senses. When we learn history. We never see history, but when people explain the correct language, we believe. We say, yeah, Firaun exists. Yeah, you know this world, first world, first world war happened. We believe.
Jadi kantor orang yang bersama Allah Semangat kamu 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 Sem